Hello YouTube, PsychoFox here. Today we're going to be looking at the Amstrad PCW8256 Personal Home Computer. Now in the early 80s, uh, Alan Sugar, the head of Amstrad, wanted to create a cheap and easy computer that you could use at home that would basically do everything that typewriter could, plus a lot more, and wanted to do this at a reasonable price. And the result was this, the Amstrad PCW8256, which was released in September 1985 here in the UK. Uh, PCW stands for Personal Computer Word Processor, and this machine was sold at the pretty low price back then of £399 plus VAT. Uh, it was sold here in the UK through Dixon stores, and it was also sold in the USA for the price of 799 US dollars. Now, it may seem a lot 400 quid back then, but at the time, only this machine and the Tandy 1000 were the only personal home computers, well, in the UK at least, available for under a thousand pounds. So, to have this for 400 is a pretty good deal. Now, it was marketed alongside other Amstrad computers such as the CPC 464 and 6128 but these were chiefly used for playing games on uh, but this the PCW was more it was more serious stuff really this was for home word processing so for your 400 quid you got what we see here you got the monitor you got the keyboard which plugs in through this little four pin din plug here into the side and you got your dot matrix printer which has ribbon cable um, power cable which plugs into the back of the monitor. You've also got operating system disk and manual. Right, the monitor is a 14 inch green screen monitor. Uh, the name 8256, I apologise signifies it's one of the 8000 series and has 256k of RAM. As you can see this has got a second disk drive fitted, that's the standard one A, that's B and that um, gives us an extra 256k of RAM effectively making this an 8512. Now an 8512 was released a few months later with that second drive fitted as standard but this is just an 8256 that has had the second drive fitted at some time which at the time would have cost about a hundred quid you could get an internal RAM upgrade for 50 quid or I think you could also get an external uh, disk drive that would plug in the expansion slot on the rear of the monitor so the disk drive takes three inch disks uh, the bottom drive if fitted which is here has the ability to read double density disks which will give you double the 180 kilobytes per side of a standard disk. Now the reason it's that weird 3 inch disk format is really due to Amstrad's cost cutting. They bought a load of 3 inch disk drives cheap when the market was sort of heading towards 3.5 inch disk drives which although made the computer sort of obsolete from the outset it really enabled it to be sold at such a cheap and competitive price really so I think it was a worthwhile move although it did sort of doom the computer ultimately right also bundled, I'll give you a quick shot this earlier let's get a bit closer with the computer you've got CPM Plus, now that is the actual operating system of the computer you'll need to use this to boot up any software but you also got LocoScript, which is a standalone application. This will load on itself, on its own. That's really a word processing package. And I'll put a link below to a video by another YouTuber which shows LocoScript in action. Right, so the PCW could also run Mallard Basic, its sort of version of uh, Basic, and also the Dr. Logo programming language. Now, housed inside this monitor is a Zilog Z80 processor, which runs at 3.4 megahertz. 
So it's quite a familiar processor there, the Zilog Z80. Now there was a vast array of software and accessories available for this thing, including a mouse that you see there, three button mouse, and that's the interface for the rear of the computer. I'll show you what that slots on in a minute. Uh, you could get a mouse, you could get uh, you could get a light pen, PC link cable, a device to link it to the TV, a Kempston joystick for games, I'd love one of them, uh, graphics packages, money management packages, plus, you may be surprised, over 200 games. Yes, actually games. This humble machine, intended solely for business use, has actually got some well-known conversions available for it such as Last Ninja 2, Match Day 2, Head Over Heels, Batman, Leaderboard Golf, what else have we got, Tetris, Space Invaders, so there's Head Over Heels there, and Tetris there for you, I've got videos of these on my channel, gameplay videos if you're interested. Uh, many of these games are just direct ports of Amstrad CPC titles, but just display as monochrome on the green screen. And I was lucky enough to be bought one of these for Christmas back in 1988, because I just started secondary school, that sort of high school to US viewers. So it was really intended for schoolwork, but when I found out you could actually get games for this thing, I was just blown away. And I bought, I bought a few, and I'm, I'm actively collecting games for this system. I must have got about 30 out of the 200, so I'm actually collecting games for this system at the moment. And sort of, I suppose, looking to go for a full collection of ultimately, but they're so hard to find these days. That it'll be a slow process. So let's come in for a closer look at the machine. Okay, you've got your standard QWERTY keyboard there. Nothing much, uh, nothing much to see there. It is quite a noisy keyboard, I'll demonstrate. With quite an echoey effect on it. Uh, dot matrix printer. It's got a separate tractor feed roller that you can put on top to f sort of feed in those old 80s sort of sheets of paper with the perforated holes down the side. And the computer itself. There we've got the A disk drive. Disk ejected by pressing the button there. So they go in like so. Now the rubber belts in these that spin the discs, they've all perished by this time. So uh, I've had to replace replace one in the in this computer here. So if you ever pick one of these up, that's something to look out for. The rubber belts inside here have perished. You need to get the back off the machine and extract the disc drive and open it up. So let's turn him round. Right, so there you've got your input power input for the printer. There's the printer ribbon cable slot. And there's the expansion slot, and that's where the mouse interface will go. Joystick interface will go, all sorts of, um, all the interfaces will just screw into those two screws there. There's not much else to see on the back here. And it's quite a tidy little machine. Uh, weighs a fair bit, but I did actually get this one posted to me when I bought it, so it can be bought off eBay. So I hope this has been of interest to someone. It is a it is a vintage computer, but it's one that's got lots of charm and with some quite well-known games available for it. Thanks for watching.